Do like, you mind what? if I ask you a bit more about oh, your ahead. history with addiction? No, that's fine. I mean, I, I've okay. talked about it on stream before. Mm -hmm. um, I used to I used to be a big binge drinker. I would black out all the time. Uh, I got arrested for a DUI. Um, and I was lucky because like it was actually an instance where I was not uh, drunk driving. And that's the reason why I only got arrested, but never actually prosecuted for it. Um, but certainly, like, if I'm being honest, there were definitely times when I had, you know, um, there definitely had been times where I had. Um, and after that, I, I had really good friends. I was very fortunate. I had a support system that pulled me aside and was like, bro, this is, you know, we, we, you got to stop. And I quit cold turkey and I stopped drinking for a, a year and now I don't really drink either. Um, I still don't really drink. I every now and then I'll drink one, but I I've talked about this before. Like, you know, addiction is a uh, anyone who is who has sobered, or anyone who has like struggled with addiction knows that it's a lifelong struggle. It just never goes away. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. figure out ways to manage it if you're really lucky. Some mo many people are not. If you're really lucky, you can even like, you know, sometimes dip your toe back in. I do not suggest that for anyone though. Um, mm -hmm. I, like I said, it was very, it's just, you know, it, it is a, it is a lifelong struggle regardless. And, um, you know, that was, that was, uh, one of those instances that was really hard for me to, uh, really hard for me to deal with. But that's part of the reason why I know more about myself, about my addictive personality, which is why I am very careful with things that I, I launch myself into. I try to manage what I call healthy addictions. Like streaming is definitely one. Um, <laughs> and, and working out, you know, eating right. These are yeah. things that, well, these are things that I hyper-focus on. Um, but, you know, it can get out of hand. But it, at mm -hmm. least, like, if my streaming addiction is getting out of hand, I'm still working, you know what I mean? And I love what I do. And it's very fulfilling for me. What about um, cigarettes and nicotine? Cigarettes and nicotine is actually a really good, well, cigarettes in general is actually a really good way to, to manage addiction um, or to talk about addiction. You start smoking cigarettes. A lot of people start smoking cigarettes because they think it looks cool. Okay. And it kind of does. Let's be real. Sorry. Um, it, it, Can it's you really elaborate bad. on what you mean by that? I, I mean, I thought it looked cool when I was smoking. No, no, no. Sorry. Not it looking cool, but it being a good way to manage addiction. Oh, it, it's a cigarettes is a good way to talk about managing addiction or how addiction works for me. I, I've talked about it before on my stream as well, where um, you start a little bit. Some people never actually smoke a second cigarette ever again or want to smoke a second cigarette ever again. But the way I, I analyze addiction from uh, my smoking addiction was, was informative, at least for me and for others as well when I've talked about it, where I see addiction as like the... The time period between your first ever cigarette and your entire pack a day smoking habit developing, shortening every single time you smoke and you quit smoking and you relapse. So the first time you ever smoke a cigarette from that point on to get to an entire pack a day is going to take you maybe a year. For some people, it's going to take a month. For others, it's just going to always stay social. A lot of people are social smokers. They smoke when they drink. They smoke when they're outside uh, with other people. There is, a, there is a camaraderie that comes along with it, right? And then mm -hmm. every smoker has probably experienced this. They quit, okay? They quit smoking and, you know, they start feeling better and they, they stop smoking for a month. And then one night on a weak moment, right? They go out to a bar, someone's smoking and they say, hey, you want a cigarette? And you go, yes, sure, I'll have one. Why not? Okay? And then you smoke mm -hmm. that first cigarette. And then you start bumming cigs off of people <laughs> over and over again every time you go out. And the more you bum, the more you're like, okay, it was fine. I'm still bumming. I'm not like buying a pack or anything. And then at a certain point, you decide this is how addiction creeps back into your life. Um, you say, hey, you know what? I'm sick and tired of bumming cigarettes. I'll just buy a pack, but I'll give it to other people. Okay, so you go and you buy a pack. You go and you buy a, a pack of Marlboro Reds. Okay, or you buy you buy a uh, uh, fucking the one with the goddamn it, the one that's like a chimney. The camel. 
no, no, the, no. The guys. Um, I, I was never the a big. Muscle. I was a Marlboro Red guy, but um, you, 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 uh, no, the one not Newport's chat. Old no, ports. American Spirits. American Spirits. I said chimney, mm. and some people got it. Then you get Isn't American Spirits because they're like not as tasty. And they're not as good, and it lasts longer. But you buy a pack of American Spirits, and you're like, hey, you know what? I'm going to give this to other people, right? Because addiction is like rewiring your brain every moment and, and trying to get you to you know, justify your actions, regardless of whether or not you recognize that that shit is killing you, right? Mm -hmm. And you buy a pack, and you're like, well, I'm going to give it to other people because I'm bumming. I'm sick and tired of bumming. And then before you know it, a month later, you're smoking a pack a day. You're waking up, and the first thing you do is rush to the fucking balcony, open the door, no matter how fucking cold it is outside, and light one up, okay? And you're smoking mm -hmm. an entire fucking pack a day, and you're back in it. That just... window of time between your first cigarette that you smoke versus the entire pack a day when it's like the final worst place you can get to, that window shortens every single time um, you, you quit smoking, and then start smoking again. That's, in my opinion, how addiction grows uh, inside of you when you relapse. And that relapse refractory period is shorter and shorter and shorter every single time. It's the same with drinking as well. And a lot of people cannot, uh, a lot of people cannot manage it at all, which is why, you know, addiction is a lifelong struggle, no matter what. And especially with vapes becoming much more common, I have oh, been yeah. so surprised to hear, even of friends that I have, that cannot go a night without waking up in the middle of the night and hitting their vape. And Yeah, vaping is really uh, to fucking To some bad. extent, that's like normalized to them. But yeah. Because your brain is working like... Your brain is working constantly to tell you that like while everything is telling you that what you're doing is wrong and it's fucking you up because you're having a hard time walking up a fucking flight of stairs like you're 75 years old and you wake up in a, with a coughing fit in the middle of the fucking night like that's not good and your body is literally going stop doing this shit you're killing yourself but your brain is like, no, but it feels so fucking good. So we're going to do everything we can to make you continue doing this. It's like the I devil think, on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done something that you mm, either regretted or didn't agree with due to, mm, due to your addiction or some sort of desire from your addiction? I mean, smoking a pack a day, <laughs> that's like irreparable. You know what I mean? I've caused irreparable harm to my fucking lungs, probably. Um, but as far as like alcohol goes, certainly, you know, um, absolutely. I mean, I just told you, I, I got arrested for a DUI. <laughs> it's pretty, it's, you know, it's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably one of the worst things you can do, as a matter of fact. So, yes. Yeah, the only reason I ask is because I think one of the things that a lot of people don't understand, especially if you've never either personally dealt with addiction or have known someone that has, is how addiction can change a person's behavior to the point of you not being able to recognize them and them not even being able to recognize themselves. Like addiction will truly take over a person's entire life. Someone, okay, I had a friend in, um, university who was so smart straight A's not just like borderline genius but really really lively like when I say beautiful I mean like beautiful soul like that kind of a person mm -hmm. like both socially smart and in class like really a joy to be around and over time I found out that he struggled with addiction to many like hard hard drugs and I got to know him very very well and to slowly over time also learn about certain things he would do whether it's lying or stealing things that were just so 
clearly not in line with who he was, it almost felt like addiction was like a second face that he had or like a mask that he felt like he had to put on sometimes. Yeah. And that's how I functioning like, alcoholics work too. Like they're, I don't yeah. know, but yeah, that's just, you, you just, just have to keep it going. Yeah. It made me really, it just makes me sad to see people treat addicts like oh my god they they stole or they lied or they did this terrible thing what you don't understand is like what it feels like to have a chemical addiction to something like it will rewire your brain entirely but yeah. that doesn't mean that like there isn't a good person underneath there it just means that they need help yeah no absolutely um, it's very Canadian of you to approach this subject with empathy is rather it? than immediately be like this is a moral failure because Americans, unfortunately, are very, um, they're very cut and dry when it comes to what they consider to be a criminal element where they, yeah. they think it's an, they, they think a lot of people, whether they recognize it or not, think that like, um, you know, poverty is moral failure and not a result of systemic problems that are completely mm -hmm. outside of your control. Um, mm -hmm. They think that uh, they have this like moral absolutist position on addicts where they're like, fuck addicts. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. whereas like, no, they d definitely deserve empathy and criminalizing addiction unironically makes it significantly worse. Um, criminalizing addiction makes it so much worse. These people need treatment. They don't need jail, right? Even if they've done horrible I things and they should agree. atone for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They should definitely atone for the horrible things that they've done. Ultimately, um, it's, uh, I, I always like to, uh, push for a, a empathy first approach when it comes to this sort of stuff. And, I agree. Like as, as simple as it is, it, it's actually funny that you mentioned that because I do recall in school <laughs> having classes where they tried to teach us how to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. And like to any chatter out there, do you feel like you're a good person? If you feel like you're a good person, you try not to lie, you don't steal, et cetera, et cetera. Imagine you became addicted to a drug, any drug, like physically chemically addicted you need to know no matter how good of a person you think you are right now you can get to a point where you would do the worst things for another hit because that like that's how deep addiction runs and so if you can accept that that is the reality of how addiction functions why can't you understand that someone else might also be in that same situation if you yeah. ended up there, would you not want people to help you? No, would you I, not think back I, to like, exactly. I, I was a good person before I became addicted. Would you not want someone else to get the same help that you would want for yourself? It's really, really that simple to me. You're, you're literally describing like how to do empathy. <laughs> uh, no, I know. But the crazy thing is like when I read these Twitter replies, I feel like people can't do that. And I cannot relate. And I think that's why it makes me so mad. By the way, this doesn't, we're not even talking about slicker at this point. We're talking about just like people who become addicted to everything. Yeah. Like anything and oh. everything that like ruins their, mm -hmm. their, their rewires their brain. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. And, and that they do horrible things. And obviously you're never going to solve every single problem, right? You're never going to solve every single problem. So what you're supposed to do is at least try to use the government regulation rules, laws, to try to mitigate as much of the problem as possible. That's why we do not live in, an, you know, in, a, in a society devoid of any sort of laws or rules whatsoever. Everyone has to agree on it, and it should be a democratic process, certainly. But ultimately, there is a, there's a very good reason why we have uh, these, these measures in place that stop people from going into a casino and, and dumping you know, their, their parents' yes. credit card or which, however much money they have into that casino yeah ultimately it's about trying to lower the amount of people that end up in these situations and end up addicted and that's why allowing for crypto gambling not only its mere existence online how accessible gambling becomes just by having websites you can go to to do that like that is unprecedented access not just that but allowing it to just be freely advertised and showcased on twitch to hundreds of thousands of people is insanity yeah like, i don't understand why they don't see that like at any given moment when you click on like the top top live streams on the platform you're gonna see 
like three or four out of the top 10 streamers just straight up doing slots which is like the most degenerate form of this because it's like gamified every part of the slot machine is created to captivate you chatters if you don't understand it let me describe it to you there are people work uh, uh very long hours in trying to figure out how to suck you in and and uh to get you to lose money because ultimately the house always the house always wins right we all understand yeah. that and uh that's that's how slots work for the most part yeah you have quants you have people working at stanford all these like fucking institutions that uh that literally work to try to figure out the best possible way to, to get you to dump your money. And the way that gambling works, especially the way that casinos work, is that they will literally give you free money to go gamble there, right? Because mm -hmm. they know out of every 10 person that they reach, and I don't know the exact number right now, but out of every 10 person that they reach, one is going to be what they consider a whale, a lifelong gambling addict. That is their revenue strategy. Their revenue strategy is to literally cast as wide a net as possible so they can get the fucking whales through the door. Bro, it's like if a, if a drug dealer gives you free drugs. Yeah, I mean, oh they, wait, what? they do that. They do do that. <laughs> I, I know. That's why it's so... Like, to draw that parallel, I wish people would understand it's very similar. I think sometimes people sit at home and they're like... My willpower is strong. That could never be me. <laughs> That's not the case. Like if you, if that is your logic, you genuinely just don't understand how addiction functions. Yeah. Actually, uh, two things. One, I just want to say if this means anything to anybody at home, the wonderful people that I was speaking of, the friend that I had made in university, um, unfortunately lost his life to addiction. So... That's one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about this. Not only that, but also, if anything, I feel like I'm glad that I was able to meet him and under, like, truly understand what it looks like to know someone who has an addiction like that. And the fact that it's not just, oh, if someone's addicted, it's their fault. They must be a bad person. They made bad decisions. That's really, really, really not the case. Secondly... I was hoping, Hassan, maybe you will be able to yeah. better elaborate on this because I, I can't, like, I can try, but I think you might be able to do a better job. I think a lot of people really, really like to compare uh, addictions, whether drug, gambling, um, and then they want to compare it to things like porn addiction, to food addiction. Like, of course, people can be addicted to different things, but I think certain addictions are much, much more severe and debilitating. N and they have a higher likelihood of ruining your life and the lives of those around you or I'm, causing yeah. you to take your own life. So could you maybe, especially if you know anything scientifically or if anyone in chat does, I'm just aware of the fact that there's a large difference between these two and that's why it's not easy to compare them. What but do you, if you can what, elaborate the, on between why the two that's of the what? case. Uh, gambling versus other kinds of addictions? Is that what you're talking about? Um, yeah. Even I mean, like, Yeah. Go no, go ahead. What's your what's what were you gonna say? I was gonna say, especially when people compare it to like porn addiction or food addiction, it's like I, I feel like those are not a like as comparable. Yeah. To gambling um, addiction. So the way gambling addiction works for most people who don't understand it, I'll describe it. You're not actually becoming addicted to the rush of winning. Okay. Um, your brain activity spikes in the moments before you actually uh, get, uh, you, before you actually figure out whether you won or not. That's what you are addicted to. You're addicted to that, uh, that moment of uncertainty, okay? So that's, that's, uh, that is actually, the anticipation is what you are uh, addicted to. Um, and, and XQC himself has talked about this, with you even, I, I believe, where he's like, nothing feels good anymore. Like, that's the only part uh, of your life that you're, like, excited about. Because it's such a powerful feeling that you want to recreate over and over again. And especially when you're playing in, like, super high stakes. When you're playing in super high stakes, when you're, like, dumping, you know, 75 grand on a fucking spin 
over and over and over again, that becomes your base point. You're never going to go back to like, you know, uh, doing slots with like pennies and, and, and feel that way as well. So it is, it is terrifying, uh, in my opinion. And that's, that's part of the reason why it's so fucking damaging. With porn, um, yeah, you can. You can be addicted to anything. Addiction is more of a personal problem uh, than anything else. Like you, 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 can, you can wire your brain. I was addicted to, and I've talked about this before, I was addicted to role play. Like, no pixel. It, it literally ruined my fucking life. People make jokes about it, okay? And it's not the same as like, obviously, it's nowhere near the same as like alcohol addiction or anything like that. But you can be addicted. I'm, a, I'm an addict. Dude, can I just say you can go from being like, Ah, porn addiction. I was addicted to role play. And then you're talking about GTA RP. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry. Yes, that was I'm talking not about GTA RP. <laughs> I'm talking about GTA RP. Not, not like role playing in the bedroom. Um, I was like, oh my, you could be addicted to like a kid? No. Well, I mean, you probably can. I don't know. Uh, sorry, go on. GTA RP? Yep, no, yep. But, like, but it ruined my life. Like it physically ruined my life. I, I was playing for 16 hours. I was playing for like, I would wake up early to play before I streamed. I would stream it the entire time. I stopped like fucking covering the news and shit for a while. Um, I, it, it was ruining my personal relationships. It was, I had no, no free time. I would literally be in front of a computer for 16 hours to 18 hours a day. And I, the reason why I use that as an example on top of like my more adult and more, uh, you know, uh, rugged and real addictions. The reason why I use the no pixel one is because like, I think a lot of people on Twitch could probably relate to that where I gained so much weight. I lost all my muscle. I started literally getting fatter. I didn't even recognize it at first. I don't know what the fuck was going on. I never went outside. I never talked to another human uh, unless it was like literally in a video game. Like that shit fucked me up. Fucked me up for a while. And it, it took a long now time to recover. Now I understand why you like cold turkey stopped. Yeah. And, and it's not the same for everyone. A lot of people can actually, a lot of people can actually just, uh, you know, be fine and, and, uh, and manage it. I was not one of those people. Um, I, I did a little bit of Googling while you were talking. <laughs> so I think what I wanted to understand was the different types of addiction. So apparently there's physical and behavioral. Physical relates more to drug addictions. Typically, behavioral is like food addiction, porn addiction, gambling addiction. So that's kind of like the differentiation, but they can both impact your life to the same severity. However, I do think gambling addiction has far worse repercussions, not just to you, but also to those around you than something like porn addiction might. Also, the rates at which people can be addicted to either thing are very different. And ultimately, <sighs> just allowing the showcasing of gambling on Twitch is going to have a large, much larger impact on how many people become addicted to gambling than someone showing off their cleavage on a stream. Yeah. Um, just <laughs> that's saying. It, that doesn't even it doesn't even work that way like you don't i know you, you don't like know. see amaranth and go no oh wow i'm gonna become a hot tub streamer now and like there is an epidemic or there's there's a there's a fucking epidemic of like people becoming hot tub streamers like that's not how this works it's just that's that's entertainment <laughs> it's not i don't know how to describe it other than than you know you're like the the barrier of like becoming addicted to uh, watching hot tub streams is is drastically different than uh, getting addicted to gambling, which is which there's plenty of empirical evidence to suggest is the high, has the highest rate of suicide out of any addictive disorder with one in five attempting suicide. Trigger warning. Um, I'm talking about uh, suicide, but um, and and uh, it's sometimes called the hidden addiction as it has no physical symptoms. And that is part of the reason why it is one of the most suicidal because like it doesn't, there's no like external qualities. Like your body is not decaying in the same way that it would if it's for like any other category, you know what I mean? Any other kind of addictive disorder. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's, it's just more like that. I mean, you saw it with Slicker. He was able to do this for, he was able to do this for three fucking years. Like, you know?
He was able to do this for three years without people recognizing that he was doing this. Three you know? years? Yeah, he started at 2019. He asked me for money in 2020, but he said he started in 2019, like in the, in the end of 2019. And I feel like to- it really, really ramped up in the last two months, though. Because I know if he asked me, he must have been really desperate to ask me, bro. Yeah. I mean, he had, he, he asked me uh, again, like I gave him money in 2020 when he asked, and then he didn't ask for a while. And then he asked me again, like literally in, uh, he asked me again last month and it, and it had gone up like a lot. Like the first kind time he asked me. Kind of unrelated, but he's not the first content creator to go around asking a lot of people for yes. money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We, you and I have talked about this before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And there I'm really, really some... curious why the others did it. Hmm. But there's no way to know if it was like related to gambling or not. So. Yeah. Yeah. Spill the tea. No, I mean, it doesn't matter. He even asked your clip channels for money. Wait, what the fuck? Wait, really? That's, That's crazy. so random. I mean, he was just like, he was going crazy on the timeline. He was just like anyone and everyone, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's you, you don't you don't get to scam three hundred thousand dollars, which is like an insane, insane amount of money without, you know, trying everybody. Oh, um, no, it was a joke. Oh, shit. It was fake. They're, they're lying. People were lying. One other thing, uh, a lot of people immediately go to compare, you know, the issues that we have with gambling streams to people promoting alcohol or alcohol related events and sponsorships and yeah i've talked about this before i talked about this before as well uh super easy if a 12 year old could materialize alcohol the moment that they saw it <laughs> on fucking screen right when they're watching misgif or whatever whoever the fuck's doing an alcohol sponsor stream or whatever if that like automatically materialized in your fucking bedroom and you could drink immediately, the then yes, <laughs> then yes, there would be a need to heavily regulate that as well. I agree. Not only that, you know, ease of access matters a lot, but uh, at least personally speaking, this is one of the reasons that I've never, ever taken an alcohol sponsorship. And let's be honest, Alcohol advertisements are very, very prevalent already. Gambling gambling streams are something that... No, 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 yes. Let me explain. Gambling streams, at least within this community, this platform, this circle that we are a part of, have not become like that normalized yet. So why wouldn't we try to stand against it? Are alcohol uh, sponsorships or advertisements good for children? No. No. What the fuck can I do about that right now? Honestly, not too much. So I'm not going to fucking talk about it right now. Yeah. Even if I disagree with it right now, we're on another topic, my friends. And at least something that I feel like we have a higher likelihood of having some sort of impact on right now. Yeah. But remember, um, like I said, you know, DraftKings fucking sponsors Mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. They're all over Twitch. They're all over Twitter. I recently retweeted something. It was like trending, slicker, Hassan, and then DraftKings ad right on top of it. Like, you know, that's just, that is just how it is. It's a multi-million, multi-billion dollar industry and it is becoming more and more prevalent. The more revenue it generates, the more revenue it generates, the more people it can reach out to, the more it can like legitimize itself, the more money it makes as a consequence of becoming legitimized because of these institutions are, uh, you know, aligning themselves with it, the more they can, genuinely legislate and and lobby the government to ensure that they can continue to to uh you know go uh scot-free and and uh, destroy any kind of regulation that could exist it's terrible 